I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. Ladies and gentlemen, tech nerds and control freaks, this episode is all about high-tech automation for your mixing station. Therefore, if you're still toting around a Motorola flip phone, or worse, a pager, what you're about to see may scare you. If that's you, no worries, bury yourself in your AOL account, you'll be just fine. For everyone else, I'll walk you through a high-end mixing station that I built for a repeat client. The first tank I built for this client was a 210 gallon reef tank. After the ease of maintenance and success of that tank, he called me back to build his dream tank, a 10 foot long, three side viewable, 561 gallon peninsula tank. A dream fish room was also part of the project, which meant most of it needed to be automated. He and I also needed to be able to check in and control the system even if we weren't on location. And of course, redundancy had to be a part of the picture as well. The mixing station is comprised of equal sized RODI and saltwater mixing containers. Each of these containers hold 200 gallons of water. The containers sit in a drip tray even though the floor is concrete and there's a floor drain nearby. Why? Because I want to contain any spills. Seeing water in a drip tray is one thing. Seeing water all over the floor, that's completely different. The automation on this mixing station starts right here with the RODI unit. This is the Spectre Pure Max Cap 200 gallons per day ultra high efficiency system. It makes 200 gallons of RODI water a day, and for every gallon of RODI water it makes, it only wastes one gallon of waste water. Here's where the automation kicks in. This RODI unit automatically flushes the RO membranes and it turns on and off the unit based on water levels that it senses in the RODI holding bath. When water is below the lower sensor, the unit automatically turns on until the high sensor is tripped. This unit does all this from the factory. No programming is necessary. Just mount some sensors, make some quick connections, and you're off to the races. While this unit automatically flushes the RO membranes, it does not flush them at the start of the water making cycle. Why not? Because don't you want to flush at the startup to prevent TDS creep? Because this unit senses both high and low water levels, when the high water level sensor is tripped, the RODI unit automatically flushes the RO membrane with zero TDS water. This way, when the unit kicks back on, the water that's sent to the DI bed is zero TDS and eliminates any TDS creep. During the water making cycle, the membranes are flushed every hour to prevent any buildup on the surface of the membrane. This extends the life and the performance of the membranes, and this happens all automatically in the background. While most RODI units are dumb pieces of gear on a reef tank, a dumb RODI unit wasn't good enough for this build, so I made the RODI unit smart with this Spectre Pier unit. With any system that I'm automating, whether it be a display tank, a quarantine system, or a mixing station like this one, I'm always looking for redundancy. I want to give myself some backup in case something goes wrong. And with this system, while the RODI unit turns itself on and off based on water levels, I added a layer of backup with the Neptune system's apex just in case something goes wrong. Here's how that works. There are two main pieces of Neptune system's gear that control the mixing station. An energy bar 832 and an FMM module. Note that these units are connected to the display tank's apex frame. The FMM's four ports are utilized as such. One port is for the low water sensor in the RODI vat, another is for the high water sensor in the RODI vat, the third is for the high water sensor in the saltwater mixing vat, and the fourth is for the mixing tray water on floor sensor. Given the sensor layout, here's where the apex driven automation kicks in. When the water in the RODI vat goes below the low water sensor, the apex opens up the RODI shutoff solenoid, sending water to the RODI unit. While the RODI unit can make this decision too, I want the apex to have the ultimate say. This way, I can control when water is made. This fact is especially important in a leak situation, as if there is a leak, I want the RODI unit to shut off as a precaution. The RODI unit gets to make the decision about turning off the RODI water. I use the high water sensor attached to the apex as a backup, as if the high water sensor gets tripped, something is wrong, and I'll get an alert. Note that since the RODI unit requires electricity to run, I can check the power graph for the RODI units on the energy bar 832 to make sure the unit is off. Remember, for this system, automation, control, and data are all key. Adding on another layer of redundancy, I used a low-tech RODI shutoff valve just in case. Even amongst all this tech, low-tech automation still has its place. 
Revisiting the low water sensor in the RODI vat, if this sensor goes dry, then the owner gets an alert and the ATO pump won't run until the sensor is wet again. This prevents the ATO pump running dry and burning out. Switching to the saltwater mixing vat, since saltwater mixing vats are dirty places, only a high water sensor is used. A low water optical sensor in the saltwater mixing vat would need to be constantly cleaned. Yes, I could use a float valve to sense the water level in the mixing vat, and again, saltwater mixing vats are dirty places and the owner didn't want the maintenance of cleaning the float. Plus, the saltwater mixing vat holds 200 gallons of water, and the apex changes 2 gallons of water a day. That means this vat holds 100 days worth of salt water. And yes, this owner comes into his dream fish room more than once every 100 days. If the high water sensor in the mixing vat is tripped, the owner gets an alert and the mixing pump shuts down. The Energy Bar A32 also cycles the mixing pump on and off every 50 minutes to keep the salt water in the vat fresh and to save electricity. The only piece of automation that's missing on the Neptune system's apex for this mixing station is to add a PM1 module so I can control the temperature inside the saltwater mixing vat. I would do that with a temperature probe and then plug in the heater in the saltwater mixing vat into an outlet on the Energy Bar A32. In this case, the owner is doing constant water changes so we don't feel a need to heat the water in the mixing vat. If you ever wanted to do a large water change and you needed to heat up the water in the mixing vat, he would simply plop in a heater and let it go. One item I'm considering adding to the system is a one quarter inch flow sensor for the input of the RODI unit. Not only will the sensor confirm that the RODI unit is making water, it can also give the owner an alert that he needs to change the RODI filters. See, as the filters get dirty, water production slows down and the RODI unit draws less water. Therefore, a lower than normal flow rate of water going into the RODI unit lets me know that it's time for a filter change. What about a way to automatically measure the appropriate amount of salt and add it to the saltwater mixing vat. I've yet to find such a system and the cost to develop one is simply prohibitive. And in this client's case, he's got a 200 gallon mixing vat. His salt mix makes up 200 gallons at a time. Therefore, all he has to do is add RODI water to the mixing vat until it's full, dump in his whole bucket of salt, and then walk away. For me to get the control, especially the remote control, and the data, and the automation I'm looking for out of my systems, higher tech gear is required. For all my clients' mixing stations, I can see the water levels in their containers, RODI water gets made automatically, and I can control when RODI water gets made. If something goes wrong, I get an alert, and things happen automatically. I've got lots of processes running around in the background, and if I want to jump into a system to have a look around, myself and my clients can do that wherever we are in the world. All that high-tech automation, absolutely worth it on our mixing stations and on my display tanks as well. I'm Mark Kelly and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.